Kuzu Sangpo. Welcome to Bhutan e-learning program. This is an environmental science lesson for key stage five for classes 11 and 12. I am Tashi Yangzum, a teacher at Stubchun Middle Secondary School. Before I introduce the lesson for today, we must understand that our Earth is a complex system made up of many smaller systems through which the nutrients are cycled continuously. The nutrients flow through the Earth's four spheres. The atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, and the biosphere. Under the influence of different natural processes. Now, let's solve the concept together. The natural processes, such as biological, geological, and chemical cycle, which facilitates the circulation of nutrients and elements throughout the biosphere. What is it referred to? What is the missing term there? Yes, you all are right. It is the biogeochemical cycle. And it is the lesson for the day. We're going to learn about the biogeochemical cycle. The expectations of the lesson are, you should be able to explain biogeochemical cycle with illustrations. You should be able to explain that the biogeochemical cycles are affected by anthropogenic activities. You must explain how each component of the Earth's global system is involved in the biogeochemical cycle. So these are the expectations of the lesson. The biogeochemical cycles are the biological, the geological, and the chemical cycles that involve the movement of elements and compounds continuously between the Earth and its organisms. The biogeochemical cycles are categorized into two, the atmospheric cycle and the edaphic nutrient cycle. Under the atmospheric cycle, we will be looking at the nutrients and the elements cycled through the atmosphere. And under the edaphic nutrient cycle, we will be learning how the nutrients are mainly cycled through the soil in the form of different compounds. Under the atmospheric cycle, we will be discussing hydrological cycle, carbon cycle, and the oxygen cycle. Under the edaphic nutrient cycle, we'll be discussing about the nitrogen cycle, the phosphorus cycle, and the sulfur cycle. Let's go through the first cycle, that is the hydrological cycle. Hydrological cycle is the natural process of water transfer that consists of three important phases as evapotranspiration, precipitation, and runoff. It starts with evapotranspiration from the surface of the water bodies, such as the lakes, the ponds, the sea, and the ocean. And transpiration always takes place from the vegetation. The vapor rises and it is transported to different places by the wind and the storm where they are condensed to form clouds. The clouds will then precipitate in the form of rain, snow, hail, mist, and frost. A part of this precipitation flows over the land as a runoff, and part of it will filter into the soil which builds up the groundwater table. The surface runoff joins the stream and flows to the larger water bodies. Again, evapotranspiration starts from the surface of the water bodies and the vegetation, and then the cycle will repeat again. 
Let's look at the second cycle now. It is the carbon cycle. For carbon cycle, you will have to do a small task. The task is, you can already see seven words there, which needs to be labeled into the diagram. There are processes and there are concepts there. Using the illustration given, you need to fix the words into the given boxes. Let's do that. You all are correct. The first one is human inference. The second one is combustion. The third one is respiration. And the fourth missing term is photosynthesis. The fifth missing term is decomposition. The sixth missing term is dissolution. And the final term which was missing is sedimentation. Now let's look at the steps of the carbon cycle. Carbon enters the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. You already know that. This carbon dioxide is absorbed by the autotrophs, the green plants. The animals will then consume the plants, thereby incorporating carbon into their system. Animals and the plants, they die, their bodies will decompose, and the carbon is reabsorbed back into the atmosphere. This is how carbon cycle takes place. Let's go to the third one. That is the oxygen cycle. Oxygen cycle is a biogeochemical cycle that describes the movement of oxygen within the Earth's three main reservoir, the atmosphere, the lithosphere, and the hydrosphere, which actually makes up the biosphere. This oxygen cycle is the process by which the oxygen is generated and then it is used. The process takes place within the plants and when there is sunlight. In the plants, they produce oxygen during photosynthesis. And some portion of the oxygen is also produced when the sunlight reacts with the water vapor in the atmosphere. This is how oxygen is produced. Now let's look at the steps of oxygen cycle. The first step is photosynthesis. During the day, the plants take energy from the sun, carbon dioxide from the air, and water from the soil to make their food. The oxygen is released into the air as a byproduct of photosynthesis. In the second step, respiration. The oxygen that is released by the plants is used by the humans, the animals, and the other organisms for respiration. We use oxygen to break down simple sugar and generate energy to sustain ourselves. During respiration, organisms take the oxygen in and release the carbon dioxide into the air. This carbon dioxide is again taken up by the plants for photosynthesis and the cycle of oxygen continues. Here we have the illustration of oxygen cycle. Next, we will be discussing about the nitrogen cycle. The majority of Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen, as you all know. 78% of the atmosphere is filled with nitrogen. Atmospheric nitrogen has limited availability for biological use because it is relatively non-reactive. Nitrogen availability can affect the rate of key ecosystem processes, including the primary production and decomposition. Nitrogen is present in the environment as a wide variety of chemical forms, including the organic nitrogen, ammonium, iron, nitrite, nitrate, nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, or in inorganic nitrogen gas. 
organic nitrogen may be in the form of a living organism, humus, or in the intermediate process of organic matter decomposition. Nitrogen cycle transforms nitrogen from one form to the other. Many of these processes are carried out by the microbes. Let us look at the steps of nitrogen cycle. The first one is nitrogen fixation. Second one is nitrification. Then we have assimilation. Next, we have ammonification. Finally, we have denitrification. Let's look at nitrogen fixation. Fixed in nature as a nitric oxide by lightning and ultraviolet rays, more significant amount of nitrogen are fixed as ammonium ion nitrates, nitrites by soil microorganisms. Nitrogen fixation bacteria, they invade the root hair of host plants where they multiply and stimulate the formation of root nodules. Within the nodules, the bacteria converts the free nitrogen to ammonium ion. Let's look at nitrification. Bacteria in the soil and the nitrifying bacteria will convert the ammonia to nitrate. Oxidation of ammonium ion is performed by bacteria such as nitrosomonas, which converts the ammonia to nitrites. Bacterial species such as nitrobacter are responsible for the oxidation of the nitrite into nitrates. You can look at the process of nitrification. Next, we have assimilation. What happens during the process of assimilation? Assimilation is the formation of organic nitrogen compounds like amino acids from inorganic nitrogen compounds present in the environment. Organisms like plants, fungi, and certain bacteria that cannot fix nitrogen gas depend on the ability to assimilate nitrate or ammonia for their needs. Let's look at ammonification. When a plant or an animal dies or when an animal expels waste, the initial form of nitrogen is organic. Bacteria or fungi will convert the organic nitrogen within the remains back into ammonium ion. This process is called as ammonification or, in other words, mineralization. The final stage of nitrogen cycle is denitrification. Let's look at this process. Reduction of nitrates back into the inert nitrogen gas, completing the nitrogen cycle. This is denitrification. Denitrification is performed by bacterial species such as Pseudomonas and Clostridium in anaerobic conditions. They use the nitrates as an electron acceptor in the place of oxygen during respiration. It takes place in the anaerobic conditions, such as a waterlogged soil. Let's observe the denitrification reaction sequence. The nitrate is converted to nitrites. The nitrites are converted to nitric oxide. The nitric oxide is converted to nitrous oxide, and the nitrous oxide is finally converted to nitrogen gas. This is the nitrogen cycle. Look at the illustration. Here you can see that all the processes that we discussed about the nitrogen cycle is clearly illustrated in the diagram here. Let us now look at the phosphorus cycle. Phosphorus cycle is the slowest biogeochemical cycle. Atmosphere here 
does not play a significant role. Phosphorus-based compounds are usually solid at the typical ranges of temperature and pressure found on the Earth. Phosphorus cannot be found in the air gas. It only occurs under highly reducing conditions as the gas phosphine. Let us now look at the steps of phosphorus cycle here. Phosphate is released by the erosion of rocks. In the next step, plants and fungi take up the phosphate with their roots. Phosphorus moves from the producers to the consumers via the food chain. Phosphorus may seep into the groundwater from the soil over time, forming phosphate rock. When these rocks erode, the cycle of phosphorus begins again. Here we have the phosphorus cycle for you, the slowest biogeochemical cycle. Look at the illustration to understand the process and the steps of phosphorus cycle. Let us now look at the sulfur cycle. Sulfur cycle. Sulfur is the most abundant element on the earth. It is present in all kinds of proteins. It is released into the atmosphere by the burning of fossil fuel, volcanic activities, and decomposition of organic molecules. On land, sulfur is stored in underground rocks and minerals. The next one is the process of sulfur cycle. Sulfur is released by the weathering of rocks. Sulfur comes in contact with the air and sulfur is converted into sulfate. Sulfate are then taken up by the plants and by the microbes and converted into organic form of sulfur. The organic form of sulfur is then consumed by the animals through their food. When animals die, some of the sulfur is released by decomposition process, while some enter the tissue of the microbes. There are several natural resources, such as volcanic eruption, evaporation of water, and breakdown of organic matter in swamps that release sulfur directly into the atmosphere. This sulfur will fall back on Earth in the form of rainfall. Let us now look at the steps of sulfur cycle. The first step is the decomposition of organic compounds. The next one, oxidation of hydrogen sulfide to elemental sulfur. Then, the oxidation of elemental sulfur takes place. Finally, it is the reduction of sulfates. Here we have the complete illustration of the sulfur cycle. Look at this illustration to have better understanding about the process of sulfur cycle. Now we have come to the end of the lesson, and today we discussed a lot on the biogeochemical cycles. So let us recapitulate what we have learned. Firstly, we defined biogeochemical cycles. Then we talked about the classification of biogeochemical cycles as atmospheric cycles and edaphic nutrient cycles. Under the atmospheric cycle, we learned about the hydrological cycle, we learned about the carbon cycle and the oxygen cycle. Under the edaphic nutrient cycle, we talked about the nitrogen cycle, the phosphorus cycle, and the sulfur cycle. We introduced the biogeochemical cycle, each one of them with illustrations. We discussed their processes. We analyzed how the biogeochemical cycles are affected by the anthropogenic activities. We also evaluated how each component of the Earth's global system is involved in the biogeochemical cycles. 
I have a quiz question for you. How do nutrients recycle in the environment? You are correct. The nutrients are cycled through the environment by the process of biogeochemical cycle. After having learned so much on biogeochemical cycle, let's explore. Number one, while energy flows in a linear manner, the nutrients follow a circular path. You have to explain why. Second question for you is, how do the developmental activities affect the hydrological cycle? The third question for you for exploration is, human activities can actually alter the sulfur cycle, such as two ways to minimize the effects. Thank you for attending the lesson. Kadinchi.